Hey, what's going on? Fabian for Liberty. Uh, check out FabianForLiberty.com, also FabianCalvo.me. Now, before I break down the video that I did a few days ago that's gotten a lot of people saying, you're crazy, what are you talking about, um, regarding ISIS allying with the United States um, and the West, I uh, just want to remind you that we're still giving away, I think we have about 50 bottles left of the Opana Natural Custom Probiotic. You can get it for $1.00. Um, if you just click the link down below. One bottle per customer. Um, and I've been taking it for three weeks. I'm not going to tell you, you know, how great I've been feeling because, you know, most people will be like, well, everybody says that. But you just try it yourself. It's one buck. You can't go wrong. If you have an Amazon uh, Prime account, you get it for free. If not, you pay, I think it's 3 or $4 for shipping. Okay, so let me just uh, go over a couple of things about the video that I posted a few days ago. Giving historical precedent for why uh, the West, and it's not just the West, the East has done this as well, but the West in the past has allied themselves with murderers, thugs, that make ISIS look like a Boy Scout group, okay? And that would, of course, be the alliance between uh, the U.S., Europe, or, or England, and the Soviets, which, of course, under Stalin, killed tens of millions of people, starved them to death. So, who's really worse, right? Now, and what I mean, who's really worse, is who's really worse? ISIS, the Soviets, you know, the Soviets, of course, had much more control and influence back then. Um, and their, quite frankly, disasters and uh, horror show extended much further than what uh, ISIS has been able to do to date. So, to say that the West would not ally with a murderous, thuggish group is just not dealing with the historical fact of the matter. Okay, that's case one, point one. Now... The fraudster-in-chief today, who, look, last night there was all photos of him dancing the night away as Rome is literally burning. Remember, Obama is not in charge of any of this. He is a frontman of the New World Order. That's why they brought him out today to basically say, oh, the Pentagon is now saying that our airstrikes that we, that we did against ISIS have worked. Uh, the trapped Christians um, and other, uh, you know, small minority groups that were in Iraq they, uh, they were on top of this mountain. They're now safe. Everything's good. No more need for military intervention. And then he goes on to talk about Ferguson, which, by the way, a new podcast is, uh, is, is live. Uh, subscribe to my podcast um, if, you, if you enjoy it or if you hate it, whatever. And um, I break down the Trojan horse of these Ferguson riots. And not just break down that Trojan horse of multiculturalism, but also the Trojan horse that is used not only in America, but in places like the Middle East with ISIS as well. Now, Obama has in essence announced they're going to stop bombing ISIS. Not only that, we now know that ISIS is now once again going towards Baghdad, making large uh, roads into Baghdad, getting closer to Baghdad by day. This, as the Obama administration believes, and this is complete insanity if they really believe this, that somehow having a, a coalition government in Iraq is going to solve all the problems. That once there is this coalition government in Iraq, that ISIS is going to be like, oh boy, thank goodness the, the, the West really stepped in and, you know, set up this puppet government of a coalition. And we're just now going to basically go back home and, uh, you know, uh, make sure that the Syrian borders are, are divided the way they should be and that the Iraqi borders go back to normal. That is insanity, okay? The reason you don't see Obama or the West acting to do anything about ISIS is because they know they will need ISIS when the larger civil war in, along the road to the, uh, to the World War III event begins to unfold. They will need ISIS against the Russians. They will need ISIS against the Chinese. They will need ISIS against the Iranians. And that's why they're allowing ISIS, and that's why they've allowed ISIS and Al-Qaeda for years now to basically continue to run them up. And look, here again, ISIS has uh, implemented this Sharia law state, and people are like, oh, well, we can't support them because they're Sharia. Ladies and gentlemen, the West supported Afghanistan and the Taliban for years. We gave the Taliban, or I shouldn't say we, the criminal government in the U.S., gave the Taliban tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in foreign aid, okay? It's only when the Taliban cut the opium production that all of a sudden they were the big boogeyman that were, you know, going against women's rights and we got to go in and got to remove them. This is, and I understand, listen, if you're a liberal blogger that is uh, 
monitoring this uh, channel and other alternative media channels so that you can distort them and basically slice and dice the videos. Um, I, I don't know what else will wake you up out of your stupor. If you have been, somebody has been watching, because most of the comments that, you know, most of the comments are like, Fabian, yeah, you know, this is, uh, this makes sense. And again, I'm not saying this is for sure going to happen. Uh, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just running this through what's happened currently, what's happened historically, what's happening right now. And it's obvious the West, just like the East has done, the West has employed rogue elements, terror groups, what have you, to achieve their ultimate end. And all of this, ladies and gentlemen, goes back to the petrodollar. It all goes back to the world reserve currency being the dollar. And it all goes back to the central planners needing a major world war to then reset the global economy and then allow, you know, basically the chips to fall as they try to manage this. That's why ISIS and radical Islamists are instrumental in this. Because they know, they still know the effects of telling the vast majority of the American people, hey, we can't allow this Islamist group to run amok, or we can't allow the Iranians to have nuclear power, we gotta go in and fight against them. They know all of these things still resonate with a large portion of the neocons in this country, and for that matter, a lot of the Democrats as well. So, I want to hear from you specifically, especially the naysayers, people that are calling me crazy, all that stuff. Specifically, where am I wrong on this? Where am I wrong in light of the article after article after article that I posted on my podcast just two days ago that openly talk about and reveal how the West has been funding Al-Qaeda, arming Al-Qaeda in Syria, allowing them to basically take over vast swaths of 35% of uh, Syria and uh, basically major electrical dams, major uh, oil fields, why did we allow that to do that? If truly we believe radical Islam is the threat, why is the West allowing that to happen? It's because they know they will not only ally with them, but you mark my words, there will come a time when the West will openly condone and say, you know what, it's all right if they want to have their Islamic State. You know, we'll do some kind of peace treaty with them. They have their Islamic State. They could have Syria. They could have most of Iraq. They might even be able to have some of Jordan, maybe some of the Saudi Arabia. You know, we'll, we're good with that. Because this is all about the war with the Shias, in the war with the Russians and the Chinese, that is the, that is the interest here. They will ally because the West knows the war is coming against the Russians and the Chinese, and they will ally with the Sunnis, the Sunni radicals, because they know the war is coming against the Shia. Love to hear what you think. I'm Fabian for Liberty, Fabian Calvo. Check me out, fabiancalvo.me, fabianforliberty.com. Get a link below. Shows you how to get your $1 bottle of our custom Opana Naturals probiotic with a powerful prebiotic, which quite frankly, if you know anything about probiotics, I've taken them for several years, and I didn't know much. I just thought, oh, buy the most expensive one. That's the way to go. Uh, but most of them did not contain prebiotics. And um, anyways, there's more info on that on our Amazon list. Do your own research. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you I've been taking this for about a month now, and I feel great. Thanks for watching. I'm out.